Welcome, treasured viewers, to Kingdom Treasures. Today, we embark on a journey to explore a topic of profound significance. Why Jews do not accept Jesus as the Messiah. This subject is both complex and sensitive, touching the very heart of faith, identity, and centuries of theological discourse. Our goal today is not to pass judgment or to persuade, but rather to foster understanding and open dialogue between faiths. As we delve into this topic, we invite you to approach it with an open mind and a spirit of respect for diverse perspectives. To truly grasp the reasons behind the Jewish rejection of Jesus as the Messiah, we must first understand the historical context and expectations. For centuries, the Jewish people had been anticipating the arrival of the Messiah. This expectation was not merely a hope for a spiritual leader, but for a warrior king descended from the lineage of King David. This Messiah was expected to liberate the Jewish people from oppression, restore the nation of Israel to its former glory, and usher in an era of peace and prosperity. The concept of the Messiah as a political and military leader was deeply ingrained in Jewish thought. This expectation was shaped by prophecies such as those found in the book of Isaiah, which speaks of a ruler who would sit on David's throne and establish justice and righteousness. For example, Isaiah 9, 6, 7 states, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. Additionally, Jeremiah 23, 5-6 offers a vision of the Messianic King. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. A king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord our righteous Savior. Other prophets, such as Ezekiel and Zechariah, also contributed to the vision of a messianic kingdom, emphasizing the restoration of Israel and military triumph over their enemies. Ezekiel 37 24, 25 declares, My servant David will be king over them, and they will all have one shepherd. They will follow my laws and be careful to keep my decrees. They will live in the land I gave to my servant Jacob, the land where your ancestors lived. They and their children and their children's children will live there forever and David my servant will be their prince forever. However, when Jesus appeared, his message and actions stood in stark contrast to these expectations. Instead of rallying armies and challenging Roman rule, Jesus preached a message of spiritual redemption, love, and forgiveness. This divergence between the expected warrior king and the peaceful teacher from Nazareth created a significant obstacle for many Jews in accepting Jesus as the fulfillment of their messianic prophecies. Moreover, Jesus' references to Isaiah 53, which speaks of the suffering servant, did not align with the prevailing messianic expectations. This chapter describes a figure who is despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. For many Jews, this did not fit their image of a triumphant messianic king. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. While Jesus' entry into Jerusalem on a donkey partially fulfilled this prophecy, his overall lack of political and military actions left many Jews unconvinced. In summary, the Jewish rejection of Jesus as the Messiah stems from a complex interplay of historical expectations, scriptural prophecies, and Jesus' own life and ministry. The warrior king they awaited stood in stark contrast to the spiritual teacher they encountered, creating a profound theological and cultural schism. The disparity between Jewish and Christian interpretations of key prophecies further widened the gap in accepting Jesus as the Messiah. Isaiah 7.14 The virgin birth prophecy is seen in Christian tradition 
as a prediction of Jesus' miraculous birth to the Virgin Mary. Jewish scholars argue that the Hebrew word Alma translates to young woman rather than virgin and refers to events of Isaiah's time. Isaiah 53, the suffering servant Christians see as foretelling Jesus' sacrificial death. Jewish interpretation sees it as the suffering of Israel. These interpretations illustrate fundamental theological differences, contributing to the Jewish rejection of Jesus as the Messiah. To appreciate the complexity, we must understand Jewish identity's connection to heritage and tradition. Judaism is a rich tapestry of culture, history, and shared experiences, providing a sense of belonging and purpose. For many Jews, accepting Jesus as the Messiah feels like a departure from this cherished heritage and Jewish continuity. Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel emphasized the importance of living out Jewish traditions over adopting new theological concepts. Another factor is the painful history of persecution Jews faced at the hands of Christians, including discrimination and violence. In recent decades, there has been a growing recognition among both Jewish and Christian scholars of Jesus' Jewish identity and context. This shift has opened new avenues for dialogue and understanding. Many modern Jewish scholars, while not accepting Jesus as the Messiah, acknowledge him as an important Jewish teacher and rabbi of his time. They recognize that Jesus' teachings were firmly rooted in Jewish tradition and that he lived as an observant Jew. For instance, Amy Jill Levine, a prominent Jewish New Testament scholar, has done extensive work on understanding Jesus within his Jewish context. She argues that recognizing Jesus' Jewishness can actually enhance interfaith understanding without requiring theological agreement. This perspective allows for a more nuanced view of Jesus in Jewish thought, not as a divine figure or the Messiah, but as a significant Jewish historical figure whose teachings have had a profound impact on world history. The progress in Jewish-Christian relations over the past several decades has been remarkable. Initiatives like the Second Vatican Council's Nostra Aetate Declaration have paved the way for more respectful and productive interfaith dialogue. Today, many Jewish and Christian leaders engage in regular discussions, seeking to understand each other's perspectives and find common ground. These dialogues have led to increased mutual respect and cooperation on shared values and social issues. However, it's crucial to recognize that while understanding has improved, fundamental theological differences remain. Jews and Christians continue to have divergent views on the nature of God, the concept of salvation, and of course, the role of Jesus. As Rabbi Jonathan Sachs wisely noted, the test of faith is whether I can make space for difference. Can I recognize God's image in someone who is not in my image, whose language, faith, ideals are different from mine? This sentiment encapsulates the spirit of modern interfaith dialogue, respecting differences while seeking common ground. As we navigate these complex issues, it's crucial to approach them with humility, respect, and a genuine desire to understand. We must acknowledge the pain of historical traumas while also recognizing the progress that has been made in interfaith relations. Remember, the goal is not to change deeply held beliefs, but to foster mutual understanding and respect. As the Dalai Lama wisely said, people take different roads seeking fulfillment and happiness. Just because they're not on your road doesn't mean they've gotten lost. We encourage you to continue learning, asking questions, and engaging in respectful dialogue with people of different faiths. It's through these conversations that we can build bridges of understanding and create a more harmonious world. Thank you for joining us on Kingdom Treasures for this thought-provoking exploration. If you found value in this discussion, please consider subscribing to our channel for more content that challenges our understanding and broadens our perspectives. Until next time, may you treasure the pursuit of knowledge and understanding.